It's a video tutorial, a uh, basic overview of how to achieve the tongue effect as seen in Kung Pao. We're going to be using After Effects for this tutorial. I'm sure you can use any video editing software that uses multiple layers and masks. I'm going to just start by using these stills. Um, got Eric here from the green screen video. I, I, I grab the still. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to isolate these areas right here. His eyes and his mouth. And then we're going to put them on this cat right here. So, alright. First thing we're going to do is we're going to have our background image up. And then we're going to have our foreground image up. With our foreground image selected, we're going to hit T to bring up the opacity. And then we're going to bring it down a little bit until we can start seeing. Alternately, you can click on it, hit 50, set it to about 50%. Then make sure you have this layer selected, and then you can move it about to where it needs to be. After we have it there, we can increase our opacity up again. We're going to use the pen tool right here to create our mask. What we're going to do is we're going to click and hold and draw a line around the areas that we want to preserve. The next thing you want to do is select your top layer and then you want to hit M to bring up the mask properties and then select none. Now we can see our top layer and get back to adding the next part of the mask. We're going to continue to draw a new mask around the next area that we want to Okay, once we're going to want to create this mask and turn it to none for the moment. Um, positioning is, is a little bit messed up, but what we can do here is, now that we've got those masks created, we can make duplicates of this layer by using Control c and Control v Once again, M for masks. We'll want to take and do subtract. Okay. We'll get rid of the extra masks. You can use the arrow tool and then click on it and then make sure you have the solid box is the one that you're going to be manipulating. You can use the handles to, to manipulate the curve. From here I can select the corner point, hold down the shift key, and scale my eye up to about where I think it needs to be. And from there I can grab it again, pull it down. We use the W key for rotate. And then finally, I 
And once you're happy with it, you can turn all your layers back on. Another thing that you might want to do is feather the individual masks. What we can do is we can actually select all three layers, hit M, bring up the mask properties, and then F to bring up the feathering properties. We can change the feather properties on all of them. I'm going to use about 1.5 pixels. Use 1.5 pixels. Just kind of soften it up a little bit. You might want to do it more or less dependent upon what you think looks good. Maybe not so much on the eyes. Another thing you might have to address is masking for motion over time. Especially when your actor is talking. What we can do is we can take and keyframe the mask shape property. We just add a keyframe anywhere in time. Then what we can do is we can just move move down a couple frames by hitting page up or page down. And then I can zoom in. You can see that the, the outline actually changed to a different color. Once the outline changed the color, I know that I haven't been editing it for that frame. What I want to do is I want to add a new keyframe and now you can see that it's the regular yellow color. <clears throat> you see that all of the points are solid. When all the points are solid, you actually move the mask and you're not moving the points. Um, so Control Z is your friend. What you want to do is you want to click outside and then click on your mask again. When you see that some points are solid and the other ones are open, then you know that y you can actually position the keyframes. What I can do is I can just move a couple keyframes. When you see that there are two that are solid, you're actually moving this entire line right here. So what I want to do is I want to click on one point and then move that point. Click on this point, move this point. Now I might need to move down a couple more frames and then add a keyframe and now we're going to move these up again. So we click out, click on it, make sure we only have one selected, and then we're going to key it up. And now you can see, if we do a quick preview, you can see the mask move over time.